How's it going? It is Travis Mortz with the Forest Hill Film Lab, and uh, I know it's been a while since I've posted. Uh, probably a lot of you guys thought that maybe I wasn't making videos anymore. Uh, I have to apologize. I was feeling a little bit um, uninspired over the winter months, um, along with my son misplacing my computer mouse for like three months. So making videos just was not really on my mind. Um, as many of you guys know, I am a photographer first and I'm a YouTuber second, so uh, you know if I'm feeling uninspired behind the camera, I'm feeling really uninspired to make YouTube videos and I kind of was just chilling over the winter, um, not doing anything. So um, I'm here, I'm back, and, uh, and lately I've been shooting a lot, so I've been feeling inspired and I wanted to finally get back on the YouTube. I quite literally found my computer mouse two days ago, it was hidden inside of my printer. Um, my son put it in there and uh, without a working computer I never looked inside the printer so uh, kind of crazy anyways I'm back uh, my computer works and I can edit videos again so here I am um, to make a video for you guys uh, today I want to talk about giving yourself an assignment um, giving yourself some sort of um, body of work to strive for some sort of um, you know, just an assignment. It could be anything, and and the reason that uh, the reason I want to talk about this specifically is because it's a great way to motivate you to shoot more, and it's a, and it's a really great way for you to look at the world with a new set of eyes. So um, I got a pile of books here. I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna talk to you guys about some other assignments that other people have had. Uh, I'm gonna share with you some of the assignments that I've done in the past, and uh, and maybe spark some ideas for you guys to uh, to do your own. So the other day I was talking with a buddy of mine and he was talking about how he's been shooting a lot and he was hoping to get some of his work into um, a gallery show or something like that. And, uh, and I, thought, I thought that was really excellent. It was great to hear that he was shooting for something. He was shooting um, images with this thought in mind. And, uh, and it, it, it made me want to tell him, you know, maybe you should also think about putting together a series of images, maybe a book or a zine or something, some sort of body of work to help motivate him to shoot more, you know, to shoot uh, different things. You know, he's a skateboard guy. He shoots a lot of skateboarding, but he also goes on these trips to uh, different countries and goes to different states and things like that. So I kind of uh, told him, you know, maybe think about doing a body of work that's not skateboarding just to allow you to look at the world in a new way to kind of see the world with a new set of eyes and look for different images that you that he wouldn't normally make and uh, and it got me thinking that you know in my in my photography career I've been shooting for well over a decade um, some of my most enjoyable times uh, while shooting were when I was shooting for an assignment that I had given myself um, you know, back when I started going to school and I was in college, we were given assignments. And and when someone tells you to do this or that, you're forced to, but it, it helps you. So um, some of the assignments that I did while I was in school still stick with me to this day, and I still remember them um, as helpful. So, you know, one of the assignments I did when I was in school, I decided that um, I was going to try to shoot uh, a series of roadkill. Um, because I, I really truly felt that a good photographer could make a, a good image out of anything. And that was kind of my premise at the time. So I thought to myself, I'm going to challenge myself and I'm going to try to take good photos of really ugly subjects. You know, dead animals. It's horrible. And so that led me on a journey driving the back roads of my area, like looking for dead animals. It was kind of bizarre and I didn't realize what I was getting myself into when I decided to do this idea, but by the end of it, I ended up shooting a whole roll of dead animals. Um, that was my final project for the year. I had to print them all. I had to print all these photos of dead animals, and I put them together in like a it was like a fold out book kind of thing. But you know, it was kind of ridiculous. I mean, the the idea was for me to go out and shoot dead animals in a in a good light and so it was a, it was a challenge and it allowed me to think outside the box and start shooting something I wouldn't normally shoot you know one dead animal photo on a roll of film is pretty useless but if you decide to make a series out of it those photos begin to have meaning because they are part of a larger body of work um, 
another series that I've done in the past while I was in school, um, we had just learned about executive lighting, which is where you, you light a subject in a specific way and you shoot them in a specific way where they look uh, more prestigious and you, you light them so they look like a like an executive, like a business card, you know? You have your shoulders turned like this and you sit them like this and it's a nice, good-looking portrait. So I decided that if we're going to use these lighting techniques and these posing techniques to empower businessmen, to empower people of um, significance, I was going to go out into the streets of downtown Sacramento and I was going to shoot homeless people using this technique. So me and a buddy of mine go out. I had like a bunch of, uh, I bought like a bunch of Arizona iced teas and like some random snacks and stuff. And... I went and I encountered homeless people in the streets and I had strobes with me and I lit them up on the so on the spot with executive lighting, shot them with my Hasselblad and and made these homeless people look like people of power and and just by doing that posing and that lighting they really did look more um more significant. It was it was uh it was a good way to show people that how you shoot a subject is how it's portrayed in an image. So um you know, that was another great assignment that I that I really had a good time shooting. And because of it, it allowed me to shoot something I wouldn't normally have shot. It, it essentially gave me a passport to do that. Once I asked these guys, can I take your picture? Here's why I want to do it. They allowed me to do it. If I had no assignment, if I had no mission, if I just said, can I take your picture because I feel like bothering you, uh, it would have been a lot more difficult for me to actually get them to agree. So, um, basically what I'm trying to tell you guys is think of something that you don't normally shoot and try to make a, make a body of work out of it. Because sometimes when you build a body of work out of, out of uh, you know, 5, 10, 15 images, however it might be, it actually strengthens those individual images by, by bringing them up and having them be part of something bigger. Um, that's what, uh, that's what I've actually got these pile of books here for is to show you guys some of the photos and sh some of the bodies of work from great photographers before us, um, and just to kind of give you an idea. So, um, let's, uh, let's dive into these books and I'll, uh, I'll share with you guys some of the images in these books and kind of tell you what these photographers were going after when they were putting together these bodies of work. All right. So as some of you guys might know. Uh, I draw a ton of my um, a ton of my motivation from the photographers of the past. I really, really get stoked on seeing what all these great photographers have done and just kind of trying to be a little bit like that. So that's kind of why I've got this pile of books here because I really want to share with you guys that this sentiment, this idea of creating a body of work obviously is not my idea and I'm only just passing along the good word. So uh, I got to start with what I what I consider to be one of the greatest bodies of work of all time, and a lot of photographers would have to agree with me, which is uh, Robert Frank's The Americans. So what this was, was Robert Frank was not from here. He's, is he from France? I think he's from France, but don't quote me on that because I'm not like reading the book right beforehand. So anyways, Robert Frank is not from here. And so when he came to America, he was able to see America with that different set of eyes I mentioned before because he was, he was an outsider, if you will. And so Robert Frank got a grant to, uh, it was like an art grant, to travel the country and he decided to document America coast to coast. And he went through every state and he, he photographed what he saw as American. And his portrayal of this country of ours was so dead on accurate that this book today still holds relevance. Um, and Robert Frank recognized the differences uh, from where he grew up. He recognized what was American about what he was seeing, and he captured it. Uh, for instance, the, the cover photo. I mean, this is the, the first image that you ever see from this book, and it's a bus. It's the side of a bus with white people in the front, like this little white kid, and then the black people in the back. I mean, that is so powerful. and. This book was photographed during a pivotal time in our history where he was able to capture all of this stuff going on, and there's no denying it. This is, you know, look at this is the black people on the back of the segregation. So um, if you flip through this book, you'll end up seeing um, 
you know, a little bit of everything. You'll, you'll end up seeing something that you recognize as an American. Um, that crazy feeling in America when the sun is hot on the streets and the music comes out of the jukebox from a nearby funeral. It, that's what Robert Frank has captured in tremendous photographs taken as he traveled the road around practically 48 states in an old used car on Guggenheim Fellowship. So there you go. He got, he got a Guggenheim uh, grant and he basically went out and hit all 48 states and he captured a little bit of each one and he put it into this greater body of work. And because of this body of work, he, he, it gave him a vehicle for all of these images to get in and, and go along forward. It's, it's not just this image. It's not just this one singular image that does tell a story of America, but it's not the whole story. So he ended up putting together this entire body of work, capturing every bit of America, and because of it, all of these images are stronger now because they're part of this greater body of work. Um, I've had the, uh, I've had the very lucky opportunity to see a lot of these images printed in a gallery, and when they're side by side with one another, they resonate so much with me because they're all so familiar um, because of this body of work. You know, Robert Frank has taken tens and thousands of photos, but all those loose stragglers out there, they don't have a home. They just, they live here, they live there, but these images in particular, these Americans images are all part of this uh, family of images and so because he had this assignment it gave him the permission it gave him the passport the right of way to shoot all of these people because it was for something it was not it wasn't just shooting you know this guy wasn't just the 14th frame on a roll of film and the rest was random bullshit this guy was the 14th frame on a roll of film that was all Americans documentation all of it had to do with this series so um, this is a uh, this is one of the books that if you don't have you need to go buy it just hop on Amazon right now and go buy it because just looking at these images will kind of give you an idea of, of how to look at the world a little bit differently um, these are yeah this book is excellent the Americans one of the greatest bodies of work of all time um, and this was an assignment you know this was something he set out to do specifically once he was done with it, he was done with it. He put it away. It's it's complete now. That's a completed assignment that he moved on and he went and shot, shot other stuff. You know, this is not his life's work. Nowadays, it's 2018. A lot of these photographers are dead. So the books that we see are their whole life's work, which is fine. But those photos don't exist together. They exist in a... It's a greatest hit CD, you know, but... Metallica's greatest hits is not the Black Album. It's very different. So this is the Black Album, and this is why it's so good. Moving on. Um, this is An American Exodus. This is Dorothea Lange's uh, book with Paul Taylor, and this is the body of work where the migrant mother exists. Um, the Migrant Mother is one very special photograph that actually got pulled from its home, which was the American Exodus, and it got kind of put up on a pedestal, and that's what we see when we think of Dorothea Ling's um, migrant work. We see the Migrant Mother, and that's all we see. But the truth of the matter is some of Dorothea's greatest images exist in this assignment, in this body of work. Um, what she set out to do was, um, there was a lot of migration from the Oklahoma Dust Bowl. Everybody came out to California to work, and there was no work for them, because there was too many people. So Dorothea Lang's job was to document all these migrant workers that were homeless, basically, and hungry, and she was documenting, basically, the, the conditions they were living in for the government to help them. Um, so this is called An American Exodus, A Record of Human Erosion. So like I said, all these images exist because of this assignment that she took on. And once she was done with this assignment, she moved on to the next thing, and this body of work is left behind. So um, this was like a weird French version, because finding this original book is extremely hard and very expensive. So this is like it, the beginning of its French, and then it goes to the original book. So let's see. See, here's what the original book looked like. The, An American Exodus by Dorothea Lange and Paul Taylor. And if you open up this book on the inside, it has all these quotes from the people in the photographs. And it's all these things, just all the, just random things that they said. She would write down their quotes to, to correspond with the images. And uh, 
Dorothea Lange um, believed that two images that were not very strong on their own could be made stronger by being put together. So, um, for instance, let me let me find an example in here that I'll, I can show you because it's very um, it's very awesome. If you ever watch the documentary, the PBS documentary, um, "Grab a Hunk of Lightning," which is a Dorothea Lange documentary, she talks about this. But she, you know, by putting two images together that are corresponding, it kind of tells the story a little bit further. See, look at this one. See, we got a family walking on the road, and then next to that road is this long, 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 endless road. But if you look, this image was taken in Oklahoma in 1938, and this image was taken in New Mexico. So these images were not taken together. But they are put together in the book to correspond with one another and to help illustrate that, that story. And so, let's see, I'll find you another one. Oh, excellent. This one. This is, she actually talks about this specifically in her book, or in her documentary. This is tractored out. You can see this farmhouse with all these tractor rows. Nobody lives there anymore. And then we've got the tractor with it corresponding. And see, now these two images have become stronger because of it and because of this larger body of work. So that's why I wanted to show you guys this. This is very, um, this is a very important book in uh, photographic history, but it's kind of one of those books that's been forgotten about because we see The Migrant Mother and it's so good that we just know the story. That's it. The Migrant Mother ended up capturing this whole assignment's worth of work, but the truth of the matter is there's so many good photos aside from that um, that need to be looked at. And all of these photos should be looked at. Um, this is these are some of my favorite images of Dorothea's because this is um, really where she started to shine and become really relevant. Um, this yeah this this video has kind of turned into a little bit of a book video, but I just wanted to continue showing you guys these different bodies of work to give you guys ideas on you know what exactly I mean by giving yourself an assignment. Um, here's Sally Mann, Immediate Family. This is a very, very uh, famous body of work. It's of her children. Um, in Sally Mann's book, Hold Still, she actually talks about how for the first three or four years of her life, she didn't even recognize her children as subjects. Um, she was photographing her own things, and she was shooting her kids with a point-and-shoot camera just like any mom would, and she didn't care much about it. Um, but one of her kids got injured, and she photographed it, and it sparked something in her, and she decided that these kids are subjects, and I should be photographing them more intently. So, um, something to think about Sally Mann's work is that before this body of work, she was just an everyday photographer like the rest of us. She was just a lady at home that loved taking pictures. She had a couple kids running around, and she was shooting them just like we all are. And when she decided to put together this body of work, it was so good um, and a little bit controversial that uh, she ended up blowing up. And I mean, she's an excellent, excellent uh, photographer. But you know, we all we all start somewhere, and she was just at home taking pictures of her kids, just like the rest of us. Um, so yeah, Sally Mann, this is an amazing body of work. These are the kinds of images that I strive to make of my own children. Um, and you should too. So, you know, of course having children is an assignment. Photographing our children is an assignment. But to do it a little bit more intently and to think about maybe putting it together as an actual piece or a body uh, really will help your images just get better because you'll, you'll be looking a little bit harder for your, for your photographs. Um, this is Virginia. And then this is an old woman that her that she's named after. So there's an old woman in Sally Mann's town named Virginia. So it's like a grandmother figure to her, and she named her daughter Virginia after Virginia. So uh, this is a special page because the, these are the two Virginias. And knowing these little bits and details just make the photos that much better, makes them all that much more significant. And you know she shot photos of her kids naked, and that's why this book was controversial. But like I said, she was just she was just capturing her kids in the time that they were they were children, and she wasn't thinking much of it. Here's some stitches. I mean, just amazing images. And at this time, I mean, this kid really was getting stitches, and she decided it was time to make a photograph. And I'm sure glad she did. Um, gonna hurry up here and finish up. This is um, Tulsa by Larry Clark, 
this was a body of work photographed in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and it's kind of like documenting the decay and the drug use and the, you know, the hard knock life of living in Tulsa, Oklahoma at this time. This guy's shooting up in his thigh, or in his calf, and then we've got a after effect. Um, some of the images in this book are very graphic, um, but it's, because it's part of a larger body of work, they make sense. You know, this photo here, if you just saw this one individual image, not, not a very strong image. It's just a picture of some guys that we don't know. But because we know it's part of this large, larger body of work, this Tulsa, Oklahoma documentation, it fits right in, and I'm glad it's there because it, it, we get to know these characters a little bit more. We get to see these people a little bit more and learn a little more about them. Here's some stills from a, from a movie camera of what looks to be a, maybe a fight going on or something. Guy with a gun in his hand. It's just wild stuff. Um, some of these images are, are real iconic. You would recognize them. This one in particular is, a rec is an image I recognize um, from this book. And look at how they have it, have it positioned so it looks like he's pointing the gun at this guy. That's, you know, that's the photographer deciding to do that. Really good. A Devastating Portrait of an American Tragedy. Really good book. Uh, last but not least, this is a book I found in a bookstore that I didn't even know existed. Um, this is a Henry Cartier Bresson. He, uh, he's most famous for his street photography, but this body of work is called Man and Machine, and it's just, oh, it's just an excellent book of detail and sharpness documenting just men working with different tools and just different machines and it's just fascinating and now because he decided to do this body of work all of these photographs have a home he may have accumulated some of these photographs beforehand and just had them laying around and then they ended up finding a home in this book see here's these guys with a photograph or something really cool stuff and this is, uh, this is work that we're not used to seeing from, from this guy, from HCB. So, yeah, this is really excellent. The Man and Machine. And, and the title of the book says it all. You don't need to know any more about what's going on. You just can flip through the photos and know that this is the body of work that they're part of. Um, so, yeah, those are a couple books from the famous photographers that I like to kind of show you guys how it's done. You know, this is the, this is the, the guideline. This is our template of what we could be striving for. Um, let me take a second and pause the camera and I'll share with you guys some, some other assignments of mine. So now that you guys have seen some of the, the great bodies of work from these photographers, uh, maybe it will inspire you to go out there and shoot your own. Go out there and think of something that uh, you know, you've wanted to focus on and figure out a way that you could put it together in a body. Um, some of the things I've done in the past, uh, I mentioned a couple of those ideas. Um, uh, I've done three assignments, three 65 assignments, where I shoot a photograph every single day. Um, that's a very broad assignment because I, I, there's no guideline of what the content is, but because of it, by the end of the year, it ends up being a body of work that documents my whole year, very detailed. Um, and because of the assignment, it allowed me to still ask random participants, can I photograph you because I'm doing this assignment where I photograph every single day and I need a new subject. And so with that passport, it allowed me the ability to shoot all kinds of new images that I wouldn't have shot otherwise. You know, uh, I found myself with no assignment right now. And so when I'm walking around, I just take a picture of this mountaintop and I take a picture of my Jeep looking cool and just a bunch of random bullshit. Um, and when I see someone on the streets, I don't photograph them because I don't have a reason to. Um, so it's like I said, it's very, very good to give yourself some of these assignments. Um, for example, when I was in Sweden, I saw these Robert Frank images in the museum. And the minute I left, I felt so inspired that I picked up, I thought of an assignment on the street at that moment. Um, in Sweden, there's all these um, these gypsies, they're Romanian gypsies, they, they beg on the streets because they can't really get jobs there. And so they're all dressed up in different clothing and if it's raining, they're out there. And I decided that I was gonna start documenting these gypsies because it's a very weird part of Sweden that a lot of people don't know about. So 
I made it a point to, I had a pocket full of coins and I was paying these random gypsies to photograph them. There's like this one girl that had a sign talking, she was telling me how she was pregnant. She had like a sign with a picture of her family on it. That's kind of the thing they do. And I was fascinated by it. And because I decided that I was going to shoot more than one of these gypsies, I continued to shoot them and had reasons to, I, for me anyways. Um, so that, that's an example of just giving your assign, yourself an assignment, maybe even if it's just on the fly. Um, so please go out there and think of something. Think of some sort of assignment. Uh, if, you, if you have a cool idea that you don't mind sharing with us, comment below something maybe that you're working on or something that uh, you're going to start to work on. It could be a documentation of your town. Um, a while back I thought of an assignment called um, Forgotten Luxuries and I went around my town and I photographed like really nice stuff that people have left in their yard like this guy's got a really nice old Mustang that he just let to rot uh, old RVs or like nice boats that have just been left outside to rot like things you know things that people cherish that was one of the things that I thought of doing um, that, that was a pretty fun one um, another one last year I thought about doing was just documenting the newspaper headlines inside of newspaper booths just to kind of see what the headlines were of that day. Um, just kind of a weird documentation of history in my own way because, you know, newspapers disappear. Um, you know, it could be anything. Just give yourself an assignment. Think of something that um, you haven't shot yet and make a body of work out of it. And maybe it's going to be five images. Maybe it's going to be ten images. Maybe it's a hundred images. I don't know. Um, but, yeah, anyways... I think I got my point across pretty good. I'm happy to be back on the on the YouTube. I hope you guys enjoy this video. Um, my last video was a little bit brash, and I kind of wish that I made one since then. So this is my my happy-go-lucky, inspire everybody video. So I hope it does. Um, please, you guys, keep on shooting, and thank you for watching. And I'll be back soon. Have a good one.